Hey guys, GreatGamer34 here, um, and today we're going to go over addition and subtraction. Well, if we might just get to addition today, and subtraction might be uh, the next tutorial, but let's get started. Okay, so we're going to get a platform here, and I kind of set up an area that I want to do. We're going to set ports. Now that that's done, we can start building. So we're going to start with um, how an editor actually works. So we're going to build one of these gates over here. We're actually going to start with this XOR gate, like this. So we're going to start over here. And this is, once again, all these tutorials from here on forward is, are assuming you know every, uh, most about most logic gates over there and how binary works. So I'm just building an XOR gate like this. So this is called a half adder, mainly because it adds numbers, but it can only add a one plus zero or zero plus one. So let's do one plus zero. We get a one as an output. Let's do zero plus one. We get a one as an output again. But as soon as we do two ones, we we don't get a one as an output. We actually get a two. The way we represent a two in binary is this has to carry over. So it's sort of like this. Actually, I might do it like this. It's got to carry over like that. Actually, my bad. Um, it's going to carry over like that. So this is a carry out. So now, this is our ones, and this is our twos. When we do um, one plus one, we get two, and when anything else, it's just a one or a zero. So there's the first part of our adder, but we also need to worry about a carry-in because we need to be able to do um, other things. You'll see what a carry-in is used for in the future. So now that we have a carry-in, which acts as a value of 1, and this acts as a value of 1 also, then when, if we have both the 1s on, then we're going to get a 2 again, right? So that means we need to set up another XOR gate here to be able to process <coughs> that data coming in. This XOR gate can be built a little differently. We don't need to do this here. We can just do this, like that. <clears throat> like that. So now we have something that can handle all of our data. So this is a full adder. So if we do 1, we get a 1. If we do two ones, we get a 2 as an output over here. If we do a 1 like this, we get, um, Oh, my bad, I'm missing redstone there. We get a 1 as an output. But what happens if we only have one of these inputs on? We have this on. Well, that's not right. We should be getting a 2 as a result. That's because we need to take the AND gate off this. So we're just going to do that. <clears throat> so now everything is po that is that can be made, every combination of numbers is possible now. So now what we're going to do... <clears throat> so I'm going to do... Position one and position two, and I'm gonna stack it three times so we have the three bit adder. And now you can see our carry logic from these two goes to the next bit here. And I also have inputs on, of course, so we don't need that. <clears throat> so, how this works is let me get a sign. And I'm also a little sick right now, guys, but don't worry, I don't have Ebola. Okay. So the A and B are our inputs, and then I'm just labeling what the bit value is worth. Um, for A, for B, 8A, and 8B. Okay. So this is how this works. So if we want to add 1a plus 1b, we get a2 as a result. And let me label these out here. And you'll see why I have that. So this is going to be 1, <coughs> 2, <coughs> 4, oh, oops, I pressed F4, not 4, <laughs> 8. And then we have a carryout, or also known as our 16th bit. 
So say C out. That's not how you spell C out. C O U. Wow, I can't spell today. Uh, slash 16. Okay. And we're going to hook this up by doing this right here. Like that. <coughs> so here's our full adder. So we do 1 plus 1, we get 2 as a result. So if we do 2 plus 1, or 1 plus 1 plus carry in like this, we get a 3. Like so. And yeah, so basically, and what you want to, one of the major tests you want to do is you want to enter, say, 5 in our A input, like this. So we have 5 passing through. We want to add 3 to it in the B input. Like so. And if that carries over correctly, it should get an 8, because 5 plus 3 is 8. So that works. Now you saw how it turned this lamp off, and then this one, then this one, and then this one finally. That's because it ripples through this, so this kind of adder is the most basic adder. It's also one of the most compact adders, without using pistons. It's called a ripple carry adder. So, now that we know how an adder works, let's try to make this subtract. Okay, so let's learn how to make a subtractor. So what we have to do with our adder is we have to modify it to be able to run an algorithm called two's complement. And two's complement just states that we have to invert... Oh, I guess I'll explain it like this. It, ooh, I'm breaking stuff. Um, in base 10, we want to do 10 minus 7, which obviously equals 3. Uh, that's how we do it. Where in binary, we have to do what's called choose complement, where we have to do 10 plus negative 7. So what is uh, so whatever performing what performing two's comp does is it actually makes the number that you're performing two's complement on negative and then adds that still. So that's how come we can still use an adder because all we're doing is making that number negative. So to make a number negative in two's complement notation, we first must must invert all the the inputs of that number. So we're going to make b negative on this. So I'm actually going to stack this like actually. Let's do this. And stack three. So now that we have all B's inverted, we also have to do one last thing. So we have to perform a carry in. Um, we also have to update all of this stuff. <laughs> As you can see here, the redstone didn't update from the stack. Okay, so now that the redstone update from the stack, you see that we have a carryout on. So when you're subtracting in, uh, oh, I didn't go over this. We also have to, uh, my bad. We have to have the carry in on because two's comp not only uh, requires you to invert all of one inputs of a number, it also requires you to add one to that number. So basic two's comp conversion, let's say we want to, we have the uh, four bit number and we have the four bit number seven. To convert that to two's comp, we're going to invert all bits, and then we're going to add one. <coughs> so now we have the number nine. And so negative seven in binary is equivalent to nine, like that. <coughs> now that may be hard to get your wrap your head around, but that's how it works. So as you can see here, our carryout flag tells us that the number that we're subtracting is positive. So zero minus zero is I guess positive right now. But let's say we have um, the number. To go to the number ten, and we'll do just like our example. So we're doing ten minus zero right now, and we're still getting ten as an output plus our carryout, which is telling us that ten minus zero is positive. So this is telling us that the number is positive. Um, let's subtract three from it. So we're going to go ahead and put in a three here. You'll notice that we get a seven. And it's telling us that our number is positive. Now, what happens if we get a negative number? How do we get a negative number? Well, we get a negative number by having a larger number in the B input. <clears throat> so let's have the number 9 in our B input. And let's subtract 5. Or, or let's, let's do 5 minus 9. You'll notice that we get a 12. 
but this is telling us that their carryout is off, which means it's a negative number. So this is telling us that it's neg uh, the two's comp of this is actually four, because since this is it's telling us that it's negative, we then have to perform two's comp on this, which means we have to invert everything, which then happens to give it, get us um, uh, a three, and then we have to add one, and a three plus one is equal to a four. <coughs> so that's how that works. So that when the carryout flag is off when we're doing subtraction, that means we have a negative number, and that number is stored in two's comp complement form. Um, there's also other methods of subtracting, such as one's complement, where you don't have the carry in. <coughs> but the most common way of doing it is with two's complement. And that's how it works. So if you guys enjoyed this tutorial, learned anything, have any more questions, anything along those lines, uh, shoot me a message on the comments, and I'll try to get back to you. Uh, don't forget to subscribe and see you next time.